Come on, join me as we walk together. Let's discover new adventures on an old familiar trail. Show you what I'm trying to do here. Um, one of the things I like about this trail is that you have a combination of really interesting rock formations and then you have the woods and then there's some places where there's the rock formations and the backdrop is the lake behind it. You have a lot of variety out here. I have this this rock right here in the foreground. I want to try to get the foreground sharp but also there's this log here uh, about halfway into the shot and then there's a couple of trees leaning and then in the back there's this old cedar tree that's standing up and I want to I want that to be sharp so I've got I've got my f-stop to f11 and um, the wind's blowing so that makes it hard because the shutter speed if I don't have a shutter speed high enough, it's gonna get some blur in it. I don't want that. Uh, so let me play with it and try to get this. I have the, uh, the aperture to F11. I'm going to uh, try to focus back here on this log and I think that would keep everything in focus. I've got the shutter speed all the way down to, to 10. I don't know. There's dampled light coming in. And uh, I don't know if I can raise that shutter speed up some. I'm going to try. Let me see what this does. If I raise that shutter speed up a little bit, it gets pretty dark. Oh, man, it's hard. It's hard. That's a... 15th of a second on the shutter speed, ISO 100, F11, and the light is coming through, so let me see if it's going to blur it. Yeah, well, actually, that's not bad. That isn't bad. What do you think? Normally this is an easy, easy path to walk. The uh, Temperature dropped, and tonight we have freeze warnings. So uh, quite a drastic drop from the last couple of days when it's been in the high 80s, the low 90s Fahrenheit, and and now it's about 60. Tonight it's supposed to drop into the 30s. Um, winter's coming quick. But I love this time of year. Two weeks from yesterday, I hope to be in Moab, Utah. And we're going to do some hikes through Arches National Park, through uh, some of the other trails there. I'm meeting up with uh, Tim Eats A Lot and Nicole Hikes A Lot, two very good friends who we've hiked together before. Pictured Rocks, we hiked Pictured Rocks. You might uh, check that video out. I'll put it up here with a link. Some beautiful trees. There's uh, elm and there's oak. There's some maple out here. 
a lot of cedar trees. One of the things I love about woodland photography, you know, I love wildlife photography, don't get me wrong, I, I love it. And it's, it's challenging. It's one of those things, it's sort of like hunting. You know, you, you sit and you sit and you sit and it's the thrill of the moment. You get just a moment when the wildlife comes in. It's fun, it's thrilling, it's challenging because your, your uh, subjects that you're trying to photograph, they don't often like being photographed and uh, you have to be very patient with them. Whereas woodland photography, landscape photography, is, it's a whole different skill set. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's easier. It's just a different set of skills that you have to have in order to do it. And uh, I'm sort of like an old Swiss army knife. I have a lot of different blades and none of them are very good. But uh, I like to try a lot of different things and I just like to learn. So now I'm trying to learn some of the woodland photography. And there's just some fascinating things. You know, I, I talked about the rocks and the trees. There's also the lake here. And the lake gives you a different backdrop. And then sometimes you can combine the two where the waterfowl coming in, especially this time of year, there's blue heron and there's egrets and there's geese. And there's even pelicans. Uh, I was shocked that pelicans were making their way up through Kansas, but they did. And uh, I got those photos. But it's the trees that are just sometimes just compelling. And I want to show you this one. Uh, I'm going to try to set up a composure of this shot. You know, you can see it's, there's a lot of light coming in and it's just all dampled light. You see this old blown down tree here and it's, it's setting up across this other tree. You see it up there? That's it supporting it, it's holding it up. And uh, I ought to be able to do something with this. So I'm going to try, I think, maybe to get back over here and see if I can uh, get the composition with this tree. And then what I may do is, is go around, because I don't know if you can tell it, but where this tree is leaning on the other one, it's starting to uproot it. And so the root system's starting to give way. So I may go on that side and see if I can get something there as well. Down sort of low. And uh, with the sunlight, it's a challenge because here in the woods, it's blocking most of the sun, but then you, the bright sun's coming in and it's sort of dampling the, the scene, which is fine. I just don't want to blow out any of the sections from the light. So I've got, I got the shutter speed down to one over 100th. And that's got, yeah, maybe I can raise the ISO just a little bit. What's that do to me? Yeah. No, nope, that's a little too high. I'm gonna put the ISO to 120. ISO to 125. So the shutter speed's one over 100th, which is good, because that sort of keeps the the wind from interfering with me. I've got the, it to F4, which is a bit of a challenge because with F4 the, the, the depth of field is pretty narrow and I want the whole scene to be in focus. So in order to do that, I'm going to focus stack. I'm going to take, I'm going to take uh, a series of photos and see if I can't stack them and get the entire scene um, in focus. So let me set this up for a focus stack. Okay, so we're gonna focus bracket this and uh, then stack them and see how this photo turns out.
this branch that goes up to that tree, and there's this sort of a scrambled mess in the middle there. And then this tree in the front, uh, the light's behind me. I don't know how that's gonna turn out, but we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. It's so nice to be out here. The wind. I think I hear a deer. There are a lot of deer out in this part. trail sort of comes out to a little open field. We can walk down through there that way. It also cuts back over here. Let's, let's go this way and uh, stay in the woods. I really have no timeline today. I can uh, be out here as long as I want. Here's some growth on this tree. Almost looks like a smiling face. Another thing I like about woodland photography is that you can sort of take your time, not only composing the shot, but, but setting up your camera setting. And uh, where with, with wildlife, you really almost have to be ready for for it because it happens so fast. So your, your shutter speeds and, and your aperture settings and all, uh, I had to really plan that ahead. Started watching Joe Hurd. She lives in Scotland and she has gotten into wildlife photography. Uh, she just did a video on owls and uh, she went, had a workshop, and they were shooting raptors, birds of prey. So, not shooting them. <laughs> they were taking photos of, of them. And, uh, but she, she's got a great video. I'll put that up here. So, uh, if you get a chance, after you, after you watch this one, go and watch hers. Uh, but if you do go watch hers, make sure you come back to mine, because I need it. I need your support. Now here is what, one of the places I want to show you. But here's some of those rock formations that I just love through here. These are these old limestone rock formations. It goes back there into the, into the dark. And I, I love to, to do something with that. And then You've got this oak tree. You see this oak tree right here? Well, it, it's growing in the rock. That's just rock there. And I imagine that the roots are going down through cracks and it in the, ends up going all the way down because oak trees, the, the roots are really, really deep. I was trying to get a composition here with these rocks. And I looked at several different things. I was looking at maybe doing something, doing something with those. Same one up there. And then if you look down here, there's some more that I had looked at maybe trying to do something in there. And then some interesting stuff over here. But with the sun, I realized I was just trying to force it. And uh, I've learned that when I'm trying to force it, 
I'm not satisfied with it. So maybe another day, another time, if I get here earlier with sunrise or with sunset, get in those blue hour times, uh, that might be, that might be the thing to do. Seems like I remember a spot up here where I had lunch one day. And it was in the rocks. And uh, I sat there because it overlooked the lake. If I can find that spot again, I think you would like it. Ah, uh, maybe the lake's back in there. There's a lot of growth. Look at how these lines are curling down through there. And then you got that old rock on the end. And uh, if I lift it up, you get a hint of the lake in the background. It's bright, uh, but I may be able to do something and drop, open up the aperture a little bit to maybe F11, which would do two things for me. It would let me get all this in focus and it would cut down some of the sunlight so it wouldn't be so bright. So I think I'm gonna try that. I think I'm gonna try an F11 right here, ISO 100, so that I have uh, very little noise. And uh, maybe from there we'll see what the shutter speed's gonna be. Let me set up and I'll share this one with you. Well, I've got, I got some of the rocks. I've got some of the, of the trees. I've got a couple of photos of the trees and the rocks. But I haven't gotten one with the lake. And uh, the sun is pretty bright. So I don't know if that's gonna work or not. But I sure will. I say that, and then I come right here. Here's a very neat looking cedar. And the lake's in the background. I just don't know if I can get a good composition of it because the sun is coming through. But maybe, maybe, Look a little around a little bit. Oh. No, the sun's not, but or the, the lake really, I don't think this is going to work for what I want, but I'm going to take a picture because uh, it's just such a neat tree. And then if I back up, so I'll back up here. Uh, if you look, there's this this tree in the foreground, a little scrawny tree there, and then a really beautiful cedar setting up in between the rocks. Let's see if we can't do something with this. Uh, if I back up even more, I can get this other tree and really get sort of a depth of field in here. Yeah. Well, let's give this a shot. Sunset on the canyon road One arm out my window Well, I think that sort of does it for this little walk in the woods. Go back to the car now and go home because tonight I'm going to come back just actually near here, not exactly to this spot. But I'm gonna come back and I'm going to uh, see if I can get a photo of the comet. And if I get a photo of the comet, I'll throw that in here as sort of a bonus. Wherever the wind blows, I'll go. I'm not chasing it. Whatever tomorrow's gone. Hope you've enjoyed this video. 
And if so, give me a thumbs up. Give me a uh, comment. I love your comments. Love to talk with you. And then if you haven't subscribed, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. If this is the kind of thing you like and you like this video, uh, check out this one here. And I think you'll like it too. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay on the path. God bless you. Good things can never stay that way. Chasing it, whatever tomorrow's gonna hold. I find my way. I've been spending so much time swimming up against the tide. Wherever the wind blows, I know it's better than where I'm.